So I had some people on Facebook say they were interested to see how Sayla and I edit some of our work. So uh, I chose four images that I think are useful for people to see how we edit, how I would, we would edit them. Um, they, I try to choose images that are similar, maybe uh, for what we tend to shoot, the conditions we shoot in but also present some uh, different ways of shooting or different types of light, that kind of thing. So um, hopefully this is helpful. If anyone has any questions or you want to know something a little more specific about something I go over, um, then I can make another video or um, just ask in the comments and I'll try to explain it a little more in depth. So here we go. Um, I'm just gonna cover what I think is probably just basic raw conversion. We shoot in raw. Um, most cameras raw isn't uncompressed. There's some sort of compression to it, but it means that it hasn't been converted to JPEG, which is basically the the file format that you're going to see like for most images online or images that uh, we would deliver for a wedding. Um, JPEG images are processed either in camera, so the camera does some sort of processing, or uh, you shoot raw and then you process them in something like Lightroom afterwards. So that's what we're doing here. Um, it gives you more latitude, especially with things like color uh, and then tonality. Um, so, yeah, they're v it's very rare that we shoot JPEG, um, uh, but the, it does have some some use. Uh, so yeah, so here we go. The first thing that I usually do is apply a preset. And we have a handful over here. There's like a black and white one. I'm not going to do any black and white uh, just because black and white's a little simpler and it's a little bit different how I want to treat them. But yeah, we have presets. Presets are, for us, a lifesaver. They're not, some people I guess would think of them as like a crutch, but we really like consistency in our work as far as tone and color and the presets sort of get you like this foundational um, tonality and color to the image especially in how uh, it can handle tweaking of hues and saturation and luminance of certain colors in an image so that's what I do first preset and then I'll start here in the basic panel and usually adjust temperature and I'll go a little extreme maybe and then back off we like our images a little warmer we shoot auto white balance so here we're shooting in the shade and the camera's just sort of reading white balance information and typically the camera's not gonna not going to choose a white balance that I really want to use. So this, you know, shooting auto white balance is just easier because it can help a lot as far as the tint, the magenta and green tint is concerned with skin tone. Um, so yeah, white balance and then sometimes exposure. Uh, this image looks good exposure wise. So then I'm going to come down here to these sliders. Shadows look pretty good, except for maybe this area over here. I don't think I'm going to mess with those much. Uh, the whites, we usually pull back up to make the image pop a little more, to make it a little brighter. Um, especially, say, if we pulled down the highlights here. So the whites are going to, you know, compared to where, where they were, the whites are going to just make the image brighter, a little lighter. 
Um, and then I might bring the shadows up just a little there. And then that's basically it for an image like this. So here's the before. The main thing here is just temperature and then the flatness to the image. Uh, raw files are really flat, and especially with we're using uh, Fuji X Pro 2s, Fujifilm X Pro 2s here. Fujifilm's raw images tend to be really flat compared to, say, like Canon. Um, so, yeah, it gets it kind of where we want it. Nice tonality, punchiness. Um, I'm not going to mess with the presence for this. I think that, so anytime you're going to increase contrast, the colors are going to get more saturated. Um, so no need for me to, to mess with this. Um, and I'm going to leave everything else alone, except I usually like to, at the end, sharpen an image just a little bit. And that's a sharpening preset too. But that module is here so like i know this image my arms are in focus here so basic sharpening not anything crazy just kind of um brings out details a little more makes it a little more crisp so yeah before after on that one next one somewhat similar the light is a little more, I'd say a little more flat and the image in general doesn't have a lot of difference in tone except like up here and then her dress and them in particular. So this one, I'm gonna apply a preset again. I notice one, it's way too cool, at least for my taste. Right about there, 6,000 brings their skin up, and especially her dress. You know, I know her dress wasn't this bluish color, um, and the light at this time was pretty warm, so that's the mindset behind that white balance adjustment, mostly for their skin and her dress here. Um, the shadows got really dense when I applied the preset, so I'm going to bring the shadows up here. There's nothing I can really do. There aren't a lot of highlights to save, so I'm not going to mess with those. The whites, again, I'm going to bring up until what's really going to start to pop is like their skin, her dress, and, you know, at zero. You can see a difference there, uh, right about there, probably. So again, whoops, gonna sharpen it. And I think that one's good. So here's before, super flat. Um, no, you're not getting a lot of contrast between the subject and everything around them. So what I'm trying to do is bring that out a little more with the sliders over here. Um, I think it's pretty contrasty. Might try. No, it's too much. So yeah, so before and after and then to compare. Pretty similar. Yeah. So on this one, um, the main thing I want to do first is crop it. The last two were composed pretty well, but this one felt like it needed to come in. Uh, and then preset again. Pretty cool. I'm going to warm it up right, right about there, kind of looking at the light here and then the shadows here, which are super dark. Um, and this one's different because I saw these clouds out here in, in this, the unedited image, you can see a nice gradient. And then there's even some like 
haze. This was 7 a.m. Um, so the way I exposed for this, when I shot it, I knew I wanted to be able to come back and not lose the detail in these clouds. So technically when I was shooting, I guess some people might say I, I, I didn't expose properly or I didn't shoot it the right way. Um, but not worried about that because this little arrow here on the left side of the histogram is going to show you if your hat, uh, sorry, if your blacks are clipped. So this blue means that there's no detail here in the original image. None of the blacks are clipped and neither are the highlights. Um, but I was trying to strike a balance between the two. If I had exposed only for the highlights, the blacks probably would be clipped, which means that it's, you're not going to be able to really bring back information in the blacks without noise. Um, so I knew that, and I probably overexposed the highlights when I shot it by about a stop because I wanted to have enough information down here that I would be able to retrieve it when I went to edit the image. Um, so this is a lot different than shooting an image like this because I'm seeing this, you know, the contrast here and I know I want to be able to treat it a certain way in Lightroom. So anyway, um, that's kind of the mindset that I have when I'm shooting an image like this. So as you can see, I can, I can actually bring the shadows all the way up. I don't see any noise in these densest, the, the densest shadow areas or blacks or whatever. Um, but that's unnecessary. I just want enough so that you get the sense of like what's going on in the foreground, the middle ground. And then I'm going to bring the highlights back down enough that I'm getting the gradient back that we have here. But then what I notice is the highlights are pushed down so far that the image looks flat in a similar way to it does in a similar fashion to the raw image. So the whites can kind of bring that pop back and that's about it really um, shadows might be a little dark I don't want to push them too far and make it look like HDR or something uh, and then again I'm gonna sharpen so this one a little more extreme but basically I just want to bring it bring it back to where you're getting a sense, just a sense of the scene. So there's that one. This one is similar. Again, I was trying to not completely blow this area, but I didn't want to lose detail down here. So you got, I lost a little bit just there. Not a huge deal. So preset. And this one, I would say it's worth boosting the exposure so that it's a brighter scene. I think the temperature is okay. Maybe a little. So I'm going to bring the shadows up quite a bit so that you can tell what's going on because the, the way the light was playing off of this the plants on the dunes was really cool. And then I'm not going to bring the highlights too far down because I think that looks a little weird. But enough that, you know, you're seeing some of the detail here. And then again, bring the whites up because it was a bright beach scene, even though it's 8 p.m. Um, so, yeah, I think that's 
pretty much it. Straighten the horizon. And then uh, sharpen it. So that gives you a really quick basic overview of sort of the goal. Like I said, it's consistency. So at, you know, it's different times of day, different types of light, and especially with these two, totally different mindset when shooting for the sake of editing. Um, but I think they look consistent. You know, there's no crazy split toning or um, tweaking the color in a weird way. They're all fairly bright, warm images and the colors look pretty similar. So yeah, again, any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you liked the video or want to see something else, or I went over something too fast, just let me know and I can uh, do another one. Thanks.